We've had people as big as Salesforce have made the migration and they've run all their applications and nothing has caused them any problem. Three-phase approach to migrating from Oracle JDK to Zulu. First of those is the, the planning phase. And in order to do that, this is the, the part that often takes people the most time. It, because what you need to do is you need to look across all the machines that you're using and do a survey to understand which versions of Java are being used and also which platforms those versions are running on. So what operating system you're using, what hardware you're using, is it 64-bit, is it 32-bit, and so on. The simplest approach is to say, let's install like for like. So you've got a machine that's running JDK 7, and so you can migrate that to using Azul JDK 7. If you've got a machine running JDK 8, you move to Azul JDK 8. So you're not having to move to the latest version of Java. You can do like for like versions and keep things as simple as possible. Often we find that for big companies, they're already running software asset management systems. And so producing this report can be done quite quickly. Desktop considerations. This is one area where, as Leo mentioned, there, there's sort of some edge cases and some corner cases that can be a little bit tricky. And desktop is one of those. Two things in particular. One is applet support. If you're still running applets within a web browser, the plugin is not open source. So there is no <clears throat> there is no equivalent to that because we provide OpenJDK builds. We don't include the browse, browse plugin in that. Similarly, if you're using Java Web Start, which is a different deployment technology, it's sort of uh, halfway between applets and applications. So you install the application on your desktop, and then every time you start it up, it will make a check to where it was downloaded from to see if there's any new files to download. We do have an open source alternative to that. It's called Ice-T Web. Um, it's not a drop-in replacement. It, it does have a little bit of work in terms of configuration and so on, um, but it is a possibility to use that instead of Java Web Start. So as I said, those are not part of OpenJDK, so they're not included in Zulu Enterprise, but we can provide builds that include JavaFX if you need those. One other very small thing uh, from a desktop perspective is fonts. So the Oracle JDK included some commercial fonts that gave you cross-platform the same look and feel. And we can provide those to you as well as part of what we call our compatibility package. The only thing that you need to bear in mind there is at the moment that is one extra step because you have to in install that as well as the Zulu JDK. So having done the analysis and figured out what you need to use, then you need to actually do the migration and install the new versions of Java. From an installation perspective, we provide you with as much flexibility as possible. And again, matching exactly what you would have got from Oracle. There are two different ways you can install on Windows. First is if you want to do a manual install. If you want an automatic install, there is an MSI format file that we can provide, which has an installer that will update things like the registry so that the version of Java is picked up automatically and we'll put it into the right directory in terms of the programs directory and so on. Linux, similar kind of thing. So there are two different possibilities there. Manual install for the automated install. There are two different files that come with installers. So there's either the RPM file or the Debian file, depending on which distribution of Linux you're using, then you can make use of either or both of those, depending on which one you want to use. MacOS, uh, again, two different ways of doing it. If you want to do a manual install, then we will provide you with either a compressed tar file or a zip file, whichever you prefer to use. And we can provide you with the automated install, which is a DMG file, so it's a disk image format, and that will install into the standard directory slash library slash Java slash Java virtual machines so that your applications can pick up their Java from there. Then the only other thing that you need to do is to check whether there's anything in terms of changing environment variables to point at where the new installation is. From a, a command line flag point of view, there's nothing to worry about. We build from the same source code, so all of the flags that you have supported on the Oracle JDK, with one exception, are supported on Zulu JDK. The third phase, completing migration, is really just about testing. As I've said, there really shouldn't be any problems, and uh, what I've got here is some anecdotal migration results. What we found is that, you know, hand on heart, no customers that we've had, and there are literally hundreds of customers who've made the migration from Oracle to Azul. None of those customers have ever reported an issue 
that's as a result of some different functionality or some different way that the Zulu JDK works compared to Oracle. We've had people as big as Salesforce have made the migration and they've run all their applications and nothing has caused them any problem. Uh, we have one bank in Australia who migrated two and a half thousand JBoss applications from Oracle to Zulu in a weekend. And um, because nothing changed, it was just a straightforward, right, run the application, run the tests, it's all good. And they haven't looked back since. Migrating to Zulu Enterprise is really easy. Um, you know, it's easier than you think. The vast majority of the applications will migrate directly. The only areas where you have to give any considerations if you're using desktop, if you're using applets, if you're using web start. That's the only place where you're going to have to think a little bit about, you know, how to, to make that migration and what you need to do for that. It really is the same as using whatever you would do to deploy a new version or new update of the Oracle JDK, you can simply use the same thing, but use Zulu instead. And I put a quote here from one of our customers who said that switching from Oracle JRE to Azul Zulu was as easy as it can get. Basically a drop-in replacement, thanks to Zulu's certified TCK compliance. Together with Azul's first-class support and substantial cost savings, this is hard to beat. And that kind of sums things up. You know, the fact that it is a drop-in replacement, TCK compliance, we test everything, really does make it very straightforward.